Yo, Elliot. So we got this question here from one of our buddies who says his traps are too fucking big. You come to the wrong place, my friend, because my traps are fucking huge. In fact, I mean, it's like my genetic inclination is towards having these gigantic traps. So um, it's kind of strange to come to me for smaller traps, because it's usually the other way around. But he says that clothes don't fit him right, and he's finding, or at least he believes, that women are not very attracted to this big trap look. Very subjective, my friend, because um, I don't have any problem with women liking my traps. But what I can suggest, and I'm totally taking a stab in the dark, in the dark here, is that your posture is a bit off. And that might be the reason why you have seemingly large traps. My traps just look like big slabs of beef just laid on my shoulders. But a lot of guys who have big traps, it's more of a manifestation of shortness in the levator scapula, uh, the sternocleidomastoid, um, weakness in the scapular adductors, tightness in the upper trapezius. It's often coupled with medial rotation of the upper arms. So it ends up being like one of these situations where it's not so much that the muscle is big, it's just that your mechanics are off, your, your, your structure is off. And that's usually the case. I mean, if you consider the type of lifestyle that we live, where people are carrying book, like if you're in school, you're wearing backpacks, and then after you wear that heavy backpack, and you're going around with that rounded back, and your, your shoulders hiked up, you go into a classroom, and you sit there like this, or you go and play Call of Duty like this, and you sit at your dinner table eating your dinner like this. So what happens is, namely the shortness, of the levator scapula, which is, which is the muscle that does like it sounds, it, like it does, it elevates the scapula, causes this to happen. So, my advice for you, because look, as big as my traps are, my shoulders, especially when I'm stretching, doing yoga, taking care of my body, my shoulders set pretty nicely, right in their instantaneous axis of rotation. I don't have winging of the, the scapula. When I say winging, I don't mean like those weird dudes that can kind of like crawl around and, and it looks like a, they've got like these two sharks swimming around in their fucking back. I'm talking about elevated and then opened. Um, you know, I also often talk about thoracic extension. Well, that's thoracic flexion associated with weakness in the mid up mid back and tightness in the upper trapezius that causes the shoulder blades to wing out. Right? Definitely not attractive. Not attractive and definitely doesn't support you becoming the strongest version of yourself because like I often say, the muscular system is a manifestation of the energetic system. What's happening mentally, psychologically with you shows up physically and it's a two-way street. What shows up in your muscular system will affect you psychologically or energetically. So for more reasons than just looking hot, looking sexy, you want to have structural integrity, sound structural integrity. Too much muscle in the wrong place screws up your three layers of strength. Muscular system, physiologically screws you up, and energetically. Physiologically, because you can't fucking breathe. You don't breathe deeply when you've got a caved in chest and round upper back. So what do you do? If you are one of these people who have this going on, right? Especially the hiking up, and that could cause headaches because then these muscles start getting tight and they grab on your head. Then you go to the doctor and he asks, you, ask, you ask him why you have headaches and he wants to give you pills and shit. What I'm telling you is you gotta stretch these fucking muscles. Static stretch. Let's, let's create a movement here, folks. You guys that watch my videos, who are enrolled in the things that I have to share with you, you trust me. Let's start a movement of getting people to perform Static, stretching again. I, I don't see how we've lost sight of this. Everybody, even even brilliant guys like Kelly Starrett, Starrett or Starrett, who throughout his entire book he talks about different different ways to soften the nervous system's grasp on certain muscles by using myofascial self-release and different forms of stretching. Says don't static stretch or or preferably use dynamic stretching before you work out. I, I, I just don't get it. I think it's a fad. And I think people are going to have to slowly figure out that it's, it's fucking bullshit. Man up and say it. Those of you who do know, man up and say that you need to stretch your muscles. Static stretching in a corrective fashion prior to working out because it affords your body the ability to move back into structural integrity. You, all movement 
is predicated on the place it comes from. And if you're coming from a fucked up place because you haven't created structural integrity because you're afraid of static stretching, you're just, you're just further facilitating the imbalances that cause you to be injured, fucked up, and ugly. So what muscles are you going to stretch? The one that I kept repeating before was your levator scapula. But the way you stretch your levator scapula is a bit interesting. I've, I've showed you this in some of my advanced courses. I may have done this, done videos on this, but in my uh, advanced neuromuscular strength, neuromuscular strength course, I talk about how to assess these particular muscles in order to find out which ones you should stretch. But the levator scapula looks like this. You want to take this part of your hand and you want to put it at the base of your skull, right? Right at the base of your skull, right where your, you know, where the spinal cord, uh, the the vertebrae go right up into the head. Boom, right. Then spread this elbow. Best thing to do is to lean this elbow against the wall, right? But I don't have a wall right now. Look down over this shoulder, and while dropping this shoulder, push your head like you want to push it off of the spine. You see what I'm doing here? Man, and you'll feel that. Mine are pretty tight because I've been traveling, sitting on airplanes. You want to stretch your levator scapula. Think about it. Elevates the scapula. You want to drop your scapula. Stretch your upper trapezius because that's really where most of the tension comes from. You become very tight from the upper trapezius. Sternocleidomastoid. Stretch by turning your head. You're probably also going to want to stretch the front part of your shoulders and your biceps. Right? And I've showed you that in other videos. You know, best way to stretch your biceps. Put your hand up against the wall and then turn away from it. You're going to feel a stretch all through your hand, your bicep, and the front part of your pec because, you know, nothing is isolated in your body. So if you've been walking around with elevated scapulas, there's a good chance that there's medial rotation of the upper arm, and that's going to be coupled with bicep tightness, pec tightness. So that's it. And then you're going to want to focus on strengthening the muscles that support thoracic extension the best way in my opinion hands down to do that is with corrective deadlifts and I've shown you several videos I probably got two dozen videos on this channel all about how to perform corrective deadlifts be, excuse me be very mindful when you're doing corrective deadlifting that you don't hike your shoulders up or shrug your shoulders up and you'll be solid peace yo Elliot